Hey guys, this episode we're going to be talking about how to install Bootstrap 5 in your Rails application using the brand new CSS bundling Rails gem. Now this gem, like the JS bundling Rails gem, will use a script line in your package JSON to compile your CSS. And basically it will take that command, execute it, and dump the final files out into the asset pipeline. And the asset pipeline will serve those up just like normal. So we can use any tool you would like and CSS Bundling Rails comes with several options. One of those being Bootstrap. So that's what we're gonna do in this episode. And I wanna point out that this will work with Rails 6.0 and higher. Um, you can see that here in the gem spec. But if you really want to use this with Rails 5.2 or earlier, you can by adding the script to your package JSON. And then you'll just need to go into the tasks um, here under build and you'll want to copy this into your Rails application so that it will automatically run that stuff. And then you'll probably want to go walk through the other things like the bin dev file, which we'll talk about here in a second. So let's talk about how to use this in Rails 7. We have Rails 7 app here. Um, and this is built in now as a flag that we can pass when we create a new Rails app. So we can say Rails new, bootstrap, example, and we'll say we're going to use ES build for our JavaScript to use JS bundling Rails. And then for CSS, we'll have bootstrap. And that's all we need to do, and it will go ahead and take care of the installation of those gems for us and install bootstrap. Now, if you want to do it manually, you can run um, the bundle install and then the rails css install bootstrap command and that will take care of it for you we'll talk about some of the other options like tailwind in the future um, but bootstrap is actually going to be uh, both javascript and css which we will talk about here in a second it's a little bit different because it comes with modals and drop downs and other javascript tools um, or features components that you will probably need so we're gonna go set those up and make sure they're all working uh, with this. And that's why we wanna have both the bundling for JS and CSS here. So inside of our brand new application, what we'll see in our package JSON is two things. We have the ES build set up for us already and the SAS command to compile our bootstrap style sheet. So this is going to set it up so that we can access the node modules to grab our CSS, and all of those things. And as we see with the uh, JS bundling dev package and CSS bundling, the new bin uh, dev script is available and it's going to run Foreman with our proc file.dev. So this is the brand new way of running your Rails apps with CSS and JSS or JS bundling where you're gonna need to run your Rails server and the yarn commands to build your JavaScript and your CSS. So instead of running Rails server by itself, we'll have to run all of these together. Now under app assets, style sheets will now have an application.bootstrap.scss file, and it's going to import bootstrap here. So this is just your standard SAS import, just like you would have done in Webpacker or even probably the asset pipeline in the past. Now the builds directory here is where the final CSS is going to be output and the asset pipeline is configured in manifest.js to only import the images and builds folder. So it's going to ignore the style sheets folder because that's gonna be processed by CSS bundling. So that's really all there is to this setup for the CSS part. And if we run yarn run build colon CSS, this is gonna run that SAS command that will compile our bootstrap.scss file and output it to the app assets builds folder. So now that we've done that, if we go back to our editor, our builds folder will have application CSS in here and it will have bootstrap version five. So all of this is now working and we can tell that that is because it is all output here. Now um, let's go and create a scaffold so we can see what's going on here. Let's Generate that, run Rails DB migrate, and then we'll run the bin dev command to run our Rails server and have all of those watchers set up. So now if we go to localhost 3000 slash posts, we'll be able to see that this does in fact have bootstrap um, styling applied. So if we go into bootstrap, we can grab some random things like let's grab a navbar example, and we'll grab the HTML for this, 
and we can paste that into our application. I'm gonna go into app views. We'll make a shared directory and a navbar html.erb template. And I'll paste this in here. And we can go to say our layout, application html.erb, and we can render the partial shared navbar. And if we refresh our page, what we should see is our nav bar is all set up with Bootstrap and including the dropdowns working with the JavaScript. So this is great. And everything um, is configured here so that if we were to go into the responsive mode, we can go and fiddle with the dimensions and so on. But we're gonna need to, of course, change our layout for Bootstrap. So if we go to the Bootstrap, um, Getting started, I believe. They have a starter template. This meta viewport is important for Bootstrap in order for it to resize responsibly. Uh, so if we run or add that and we refresh, what we should see is that this will now uh, change the nav bar into the hamburger menu there when uh, we are in smaller sizes. So that is a critical thing to have because without it, if we refresh, we're gonna get that nav bar and a big scrolling wide thing that isn't fully responsive there. So there we go. Now, if we go back and play with some of the other JavaScript stuff here, what we'll find out is that some of these things don't seem to work. So if we go to, for example, tooltips, um, what you'll see in the docs is that for performance reasons, you have to initialize uh, tooltips yourself. So what we'll do is we'll grab our uh, copy, our JavaScript example here for tooltips, and then we can go into app JavaScript's application.js, and it's already imported Bootstrap because we specified ES Build as our Bootstrap or our JavaScript um, bundler, and then inside of here we can say document add event listener. On the turbo load event, we want to initialize our bootstrap code here. And we can paste this in, and that will make sure that our bootstrap JavaScript tooltips are set up on every page load. So now we can grab something like a button with the tooltip on the bottom, and we can paste that in some view here, and we'll be able to see that that uh, tooltip now works. And there we go. So um, other things we can play with, like a modal, for example, if we go grab this live demo with a button that triggers the modal, we can copy this and paste it in as well. And we'll see that uh, because the JavaScript is already imported for us, our modals work out of the box. So that's great. And it automatically works. We don't have to set up any JavaScript for that. So that's all done for us by this import bootstrap um, from the Bootstrap package. And really, that's about all there is to it. The app JavaScript is going to be bundled in the same way that the uh, CSS is, but it's going to use the yarn build command instead of yarn build CSS. So it's kind of using Bootstrap um, with both of the bundling libraries to make all this work. And one last example here for good measure, we can paste in a nav um, for tabs and we can see if that works and we get the different content showing up automatically when we click on these tabs and it highlights them accordingly as well. So um, that is really all there is to setting up Bootstrap in your Rails application with uh, the CSS and JS bundling. It is extremely easy and extremely awesome to be able to get up and running this quickly. That's something that's always been kind of hard to go set up in Rails. You had to go find a tutorial and copy stuff but now it's built in and really easy to use. So that's it for this episode. We'll talk about Tailwind CSS in the next one or something like that. But until then, I will talk to you guys later. Peace.